Um, I'm Talia. I make things and this is where I post videos about them. Um, or hopefully, we'll see if this makes it on the, on the internet at all. Um, yeah, basically I, you know, got into knitting again. You know, I've been, I've been knitting for, for a long time. Um, but I got into knitting again during lockdown, like pretty much everyone. <laughs> um, a lot of people in the knitting community kind of started up then, um, I've noticed. And um, yeah, I've yeah I've been sharing a lot of the stuff on Instagram um, that I've been making and so on. But um, I thought, yeah, since I love to watch um, knitting podcasts, I thought I'd make my own. Um, and yeah, I really like this more relaxed way of showing off the things that I've made because I'm not much of a photographer. So Instagram isn't really my... Um, yeah, my forte. So let's see if video works. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, I've already mentioned that I've been knitting for a while. Um, I um, yeah, I used to just make like squares for charity blankets and so on. Um, but yeah, got into making more garments and stuff recently, um, and I've been really enjoying it. Like obsessed with it <laughs> for. Um, yeah, for the past um, almost two years, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I I guess I'll just start. Um, the normal format, I guess, is um, uh, finished objects, then um, yarn acquisitions, and then uh, works in progress, or works in progress, and then yarn acquisitions. Who knows? Um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I like. Like I said, this is um, my first time doing this, so I'm going to um, feel it out. Um, but yeah, uh, since I don't have, you know, this is the first, this is the first episode. Um, I don't have anything like since last time, you know. Um, but I thought I'd just include a couple of things um, that have happened, that I've finished, that I've, that I've gotten, that I'm working on over the past... Um, almost month or so um, and yeah I've actually finished a few things um, after not finishing stuff for a long time so yeah um, all right so the first thing that I have is a sweater um, or a jersey as we like to call them here in South Africa <laughs> um, I'm South African by the way that just in case um, some of you might have been confused by the accent um, Sounds a bit Australian, sounds a bit British, but South African. Um, yeah, so I have this this sweater. Um, I this is a Milo sweater. I think the um, the yeah the the person who made it, made the pattern is called Ash and Her Knits on Instagram. Um, I bought it a while ago. This is actually the third Milo sweater I've made. And not a single one of them has been exactly to the pattern specifications. Um, yeah, as you will learn if you watch any more of these, um, I really don't tend to follow patterns exactly. Um, sometimes it it um, you know goes horribly wrong, and then sometimes it goes wonderfully right. So <laughs> this is an example of when it's gone right. Um, the first time I made a Milo sweater, I was um, really impatient. Um, I couldn't get my hands on the 15 millimeter needles that the the pattern recommends. Um, so I just went with the biggest size I could find at that stage, um, which was a 10 millimeter. Um, yeah, just from my local yarn store. Um, yeah, so I just kind of cast on and hope for the best. Um, it was the first raglan sweater I'd ever made, um, which I was really keen to do because um, seaming is, is not my favorite thing to do. So to do it, to make a seamless sweater um, was really appealing to me. Um, and yeah, um, that one, that one turned out all right. Um, I, yeah, I've got it here. That's why I'm like, that's why I'm looking at it. I've got like crates of all my knitwear here. I'm not going to show that one to you, but um, yeah. And then I made another one 
I think with the correct needle size as well um, but I didn't do any of the color work and I think yeah there was something else I changed about the pattern I can't remember exactly what it's a very simple pattern so it's very easy to modify um, especially once you start understanding the construction of a top-down raglan sweater um, but yeah and then for this one I went back to the 10 millimeter needles because I really actually like my other one um, yeah so this one worked out really well the yarn that I used um, another thing <laughs> that you will figure out pretty quickly um, and you will see throughout you know if, uh, if when when I make more of these um, is I really like to work with scrap yarn um, and yeah stuff from unraveled sweaters that I've that you know that I that I haven't worn um, a lot even I'll even go to like a secondhand shop or like a charity shop thrift store um, and pick up some sweaters that are maybe damaged or um, yeah um, but have like a pretty nice fiber content or even if it's not you know if it feels nice if I like it if I like the color if I think it's going to be pretty easy to unravel then I'll go unravel it um, and yeah so I tend to work a lot um, yeah like I said in scrap yarn um, and for that reason I like to combine yarns quite a lot um, it's very difficult to find very thick chunky yarn here um, in South Africa um, especially that's of good quality so I like to work with multiple strands and that way it actually um, yeah it, it makes it quite quite exciting and fun and also a nice way to use up large quantities of yarn in my stash so that's kind of what this was is I had a bunch of green yarn and I wanted to use it up and I also needed a bit of a confidence boost project because I was um, had just finished unraveling a few quite a few projects that I had made but not really worn and that's another thing that I like to do um, it's a bit sad but it is actually quite satisfying in a way to unravel things that I've made that I never wear um, I'd rather spend that extra time um, unraveling it and making something new that I will wear and love and that also means that I don't have to um, yeah buy new yarn which is great um, yeah, so so the modification, as I've mentioned, that I made with this is that I used 10 millimeter needles instead of uh, 15 millimeter, um, and then I also decided, unpopular, nothing opinion. Um, I don't like balloon or like like balloon sleeve sweaters anymore. Um, I think they're in, impractical, <laughs> um, and I actually just don't like how they look, especially on chunky sweaters. I think it's been overdone. Um, yeah, just my opinion. Don't at me. Um, yeah, so I I tapered the sleeves. Um, they kind of ended up because I'm not um, super experienced with this kind of thing. Um, I kind of I knitted straight up until about here, and then I decreased quite quickly. Um, and because of that, um, the yeah, it kind of it's it's like puffy up here which I actually really love like it, it's like puffy up until the elbow and then it kind of starts to taper um, to the wrist and I really love how that looks like it feels very um, I don't know if you know what a leg of mutton sleeve is it's like where the um, I, yeah don't yeah I have no idea what what year um, that was from what what decade that was from um, where it was popular but it's kind of very poofy up here and then it and then it cinches at the at the elbow and then it's um, uh, yeah straight and tight to the wrist um, yeah so it's not exactly like that but I, yeah anyway I really love how it fits so I'm very happy with the modifications that I've made um, and another thing is that it is in acrylics so most of these I think there's some wool content that's the thing when you when you unravel especially handmade sweaters you don't know what the fiber content is I've kind of started to learn how to 
feel, you know, um, if there's, especially if there's wool in something, I'm very sensitive to the itchiness of wool. Um, so I think because as you can see, um, it's got, yeah, light green, dark green, and then a beige strand. Um, the beige, I think has some wool in it. Um, but it's not so much that it's scratchy, which is what I wanted with the sweater. I wanted to be able to throw it on with a t-shirt and not get, because I get it's itchy like here um, and around my neck if it's wool. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy with this. I've been wearing it a lot. Not today. It's really hot. I actually wanted to film this wearing the sweater, um, but we're having a heat wave at the moment. So, even though I'm in one of the coldest rooms in the house, um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to put this on right now. Um, yeah, so moving on to my next finished object. It's a scarf. Um, yeah, I realized I didn't have any scarves um, that I'd made. I've got loads of scarves, um, but I, I hadn't made anything for myself. Um, I have tried to make myself scarves every now and again, um, but they just never, I never ended up wearing them. But um, this one, I modeled the dimensions after a scarf that I really enjoy, that I like to travel with because it goes with everything. Um, it's nice and warm, but it's not too, too bulky. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still a fairly bulky, bulky scarf. Um, but yeah, I didn't follow any particular pattern. Um, it's just a one by one rib, um, as you can see. If it'll focus, there we go. Um, yeah, it's just a one by one rib, nice and stretchy, nice and soft. Um, and then I used this yarn that I salvaged from, yet again, <laughs> a, sh a thrifted sweater. Um, or jersey um, and I yeah I've been using this grey yarn for quite a lot for quite a few projects because um, the sweater was quite big and I um, I got quite a lot out of it I think it's also 50% wool but but um, the rest is acrylic um, so yeah it's warm, but it's not too scratchy. Um, yeah, if I do go for wool, I do prefer like a wool blend because um, it tends to be a bit, a bit um, less scratchy. Um, yeah, so that's why I chose this for the scarf because it's relatively neutral first of all, but also because um, it's not going to be too scratchy around my neck. Um, yeah, I've been wearing very, um, been working with this yarn. Like I said, I have. A few projects but I have to be careful about what what I choose to make with it because I do I prefer I like how it feels on my skin basically um, and yeah I want to be able to make the most of that um, in making projects that are that are close to my skin um, yeah and then as you've seen when I showed the close-up there we go um, yeah, there is some color in it. It's not just gray. Um, so what I did, um, and this was a very laborious process, is I held the strand of gray yarn together with a strand of uh, thread. Um, sorry, I keep looking in the in the viewfinder. I'm not used to doing this. Um, but yeah, so I have um, a bunch of embroidery floss um, and sewing thread and so on that I've been using um, you know on and off for sewing projects and stuff I sew as well as a knit um, but yeah I had like a bunch of scraps that I didn't have the heart to throw away um, yeah that's another thing about me I don't like to throw things away I'd rather use them um, and I thought that 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 it would make this um, the scarf a bit more interesting um, also, yeah, firstly to work on because um, that's, you know, I like to add a little bit of colour into whatever I work on, um, otherwise I do get a bit bored, um, especially if it's such a long, I mean, this, it took me, took me quite a while 
Um, and in One by One Rogue, which is not my favourite, um, it, yeah, it was, it was quite a bit of a project. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I took the scraps of the, um, the sewing thread and I tied them together um, and wound them on their own little bobbin and then knitted it together with the yarn. So, yeah, um, yeah, if that makes sense. I hope I explained that <laughs> that well. Um, yeah, some things, sometimes things work in my brain and then I don't know if it's actually understandable. But um, yeah, it ended up being really beautiful. I I really like the scarf. Um, I definitely, yeah, I've got some traveling coming up and I'm definitely going to use it. And also throughout the winter because it is winter here, um, or it's approaching winter here in um, in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, so that's finished object number two. Um, and then we have number three, which is a beanie. Um, this is the... Yo, I should have written all of this stuff down. <laughs> um, this is a... it's a brioche beanie by Originally Lovely. Um, she's got some really awesome patterns on her um, on her website so I really recommend you ch check those out. This is the first one of hers that I've made. I started making another one of her patterns um, but it was it was kind of a, a situation where I was not at home so I didn't have access to my full yarn stash. I just had like leftovers from another project um, but I really wanted to knit so I started um, a project and I just wasn't feeling it so um, yeah when I got home I just unraveled it um, and reused it and actually this is I reused it in this <laughs> um, it was this this darker yarn so as you can see this is a two color brioche hat um, yeah so if you follow me on Instagram and have been paying attention um, because, yeah, like I said, I don't post on there too often. Um, I had a bit of a, a bit of trouble with this beanie. Um, yeah, um, the, the pattern calls for a tubular cast on and I was really struggling with it. <laughs> I think, um, it might have been, it was probably a combination of, of a few things. Um, so the yarn weight that I used is... Uh, lighter than than the pattern calls for. It's also a very like slippery acrylic yarn, not a wool like um, like the pattern calls for. Um, and yeah, I have also just never done a tubular cast on before <laughs> and struggled with it. So um, I think also my cable length was a little bit long. Um, I definitely need to invest in some short tips because I've got an interchangeable needle set um, but I think I do need to invest in some shorter tips just to make um, especially the cast on of, of beanies and so on um, especially if they're gonna grow like brioche um, the cast on tends to be a relatively tight um, circle that grows um, as you as you start with the stitch itself um, yeah so I tried the tubular cast on a few times um, and I was struggling with it and ended up wrestling with my needles and breaking a cable so um, I was really upset about that. <laughs> um, I ranted a little bit on Instagram about that. Um, yeah, no, I was very upset because the, um, you know, getting a new cable is a bit of a mission. Um, I have to order it online, wait for it, um, and so on. And um, where we live, um, accepting deliveries is a little bit difficult. Um, so not impossible, um, but I just don't. Um, I don't prefer to have things delivered. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So I want to be able to go somewhere and buy it, and then, you know, in my own time. Um, yeah, so I was, um, 
you know, and I definitely needed a new cable um, because it was it was my shortest cable. I think it's, it was the one to make a 40 centimeter needle. Um, yeah, so I um, I was really upset about that, <laughs> um, and then I kind of let the project lie for a little bit. Um, and then not for very long actually for about a day um, and I was like no I have to do I have to be able to to do this because I was really enjoying the brioche I did actually get a few rows in before I realized that because I was confused by the cast on I had cast on the wrong number of stitches and my brioche rib was not working out properly so I had to unravel that as well um, yeah so I just did a normal a normal um, uh, long tail cast on which is my favorite cast on method um, and because of that the the cast on edge is quite tight um, but yeah I've, you know I've gotten over that now <laughs> um, yeah other than that it's a really beautiful beanie um, and I managed to find those cables at my local yarn store um, I did not realize that they had, I think it was a new thing, I spoke to the to the um, shop assistant um, and he said that they'd kind of just gotten it at that end, so I managed to get a new cable, all is well, um, yeah. Um, I did have a bit of an issue with the cast off, um, as you can see there, it's, um, it's a three needle bind off, um, which I've also never done before um, and I did it kind of quite late one evening and I really wanted to get it done so I didn't do it properly so the lines are supposed to match up um, but they don't but that's okay um, I'm relatively tall the number of people who are going to see the top of my beanie um, because I like to wear it kind of tight against my head um, the number of people who are going to see it are is quite small so <laughs> I'm okay with that that's fine. Um, yeah, so basically um, that's it for for finished objects. Um, yeah, I think I will move into yarn acquisitions. So let's start off with my new yarn because most of my yarn is second hand. Uh, let me just open the, the container. Um, all right, so as I was, um, you know, I just popped into my local, my local yarn store. Um, I was in the area, so I decided to pop in there. Um, I was actually looking for some cotton sock yarn. So as I've mentioned, I'm very sensitive to wool, so wool socks. Um, I always have to wear like <laughs> cotton socks underneath my wool socks, um, which is fine. I would just... Yeah, I don't know. I think it would be nice to have a pair of socks that I can wear like on my actual feet. Um, but yeah, and I was quite convinced that they actually had that they had like a cotton nylon blend or something there that I could use. Um, unfortunately, that was not the case. So I was very sad. Um, and I bought wool sock yarn. Um, so this is kind of the yarn brand that we have... Um, that's kind of the most well-known in South Africa, um, called African Expressions. Um, yeah, they've got quite a an awesome, um, yeah, a really good selection selection actually. Um, but yeah, like I said, wool is not my favourite. Um, I like it for all its properties except for the fact that I'm sensitive to to hard feels. So. I bought 50 grams of each of these colors. This is like a, a dark, um, like a purple color, and then this one is a light blue. Um, just because I, I thought maybe they would look nice together um, in some kind of a way. Um, I don't have a specific plan for these, but I think what I'm gonna do is make a pair of socks that are stripy with these two colors. Um, yeah, I've only made two pairs of socks ever. Um, and I'd like to get more into that. Um, yeah, but like I said, I've been struggling to find um, uh, yeah, like a sock yarn that I actually want to use. Um, yeah, this is also relatively expensive. So um, 
yeah, I'm gonna think carefully about how to use these. Um, yeah, so that was actually my only new <laughs> new yarn purchase um, recently. The rest has all been secondhand, so I like to go to like charity shops, thrift stores and so on to get my yarn. Um, yeah, that is how, um, yeah, that's, that's where I get most of my yarn. Um, it's a fun creative challenge when you're trying to make something. Um, you have to look at the yarn quantity and, and so on and try to match different yarns as well if you think you're not going to have enough. Um, so I play yarn chicken quite a lot, um, but I tend to have projects that um, won't be too, it won't be too devastating if I lose. Um, yeah, feel free to check out my Instagram for more, for more of my projects and so on. Um, or subscribe <laughs> for more of this. Um, yeah, so um, in terms of secondhand yarn, I got this little, I think this is also sock weight, um, this little green, that's not green, it's grey, um, this grey yarn, um, I think it's probably also wool, that's what it feels like, it didn't have a label on it, um, yeah, but I thought maybe I could use it together with this, or, you know, if I have left over from this, it would be quite nice to, to do it like a scrap sock. Um, that's also a goal of mine to make enough socks and have enough sock yarn um, that I actually have enough to make scrap socks which um, that seems very exciting to me um, and then I also found this I love these like old yarn labels it's so cool um, and a lot of them are also in Afrikaans um, which yeah if you don't know that's one of the languages that we speak here um, in South Africa um, it's yeah native to South Africa um, so yeah this is 100% wool um, I've got two um, and I think it's probably close to sock weight um, I'm not sure I'll try it um, I think that would be fun um, to to try and mix this in with my with my other sock yarns maybe I could do like a stripy sock with scraps but then this would be the base because I've got a bit more of this um, that I envision having scraps. Um, yeah, so that's everything in the way of um, sock yarns. And then we have a bunch of, I think it's probably all acrylic except for to cotton. So let me get that out of the way. Um, so I scored these two, um, <laughs> which, yeah, this was a real score. Um, to find this much cotton for this little money. Um, they, this cost me 15 rand each um, and if you're in dollars that's probably, I don't know what the exchange rate is right now, <laughs> but it's probably about a dollar or less than a dollar um, each. So yeah, that's quite a lot on there. Um, I'll definitely be knitting some fun stuff in summer. I, yeah, I like the feeling of cotton. The only problem is, is these, I think, I don't think will look very good on me. Um, on, on camera they look a little bit darker, but they're a bit lighter in person. And I think actually, um, yeah, I think they're going to wash me out a little bit. I don't know if it's going to be something I reach for. So I am going to, um, yeah, try and dye them. We'll see. I've never done that before. Um, but yeah, I have kind of, I really like like a rusty orange. Um, I have a few things in that, in that color and I think it looks nice on me. So I think, I think I will, that will be an adventure that we try out. Um, <clears throat> I say we, um, I, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, and then we have a bunch of, like, acrylic. I have this blue, which used to, it would kill, I came in a packet, it was like a half-finished project um, with, yeah, it was like a stripy project like this. It's probably, like, fring fingering weight. Um, yeah, no, that's not going to focus. Um, it's probably about fingering weight. Um, it's acrylic. There was a label with it, I think it's...
All right. Um, I th yeah, it paused, but I think we are back. Um, yeah, I think when um, when the yeah the camera decided to stop recording, um, I was talking about these two. So yeah, this came in a in a packet. There were like a few a few balls of it um, and an unfinished project. I think it was probably like a scarf or something. Um, so I ended up unraveling it and um, winding it into these balls. Um, I don't actually have a ball winder. Um, what I use to to make these yarn cakes is a um, excuse my pronunciation because <laughs> um, I believe it is a Swedish word. Um, sorry, I'm just getting getting it out here. I use this which is a Nostra pinner, I think. Um, yeah, so yeah, maybe in a future video I'll show you how, how I use this, um, or you can just Google it. Um, there's lots of videos on how to use one of these. Um, yeah, so basically I use this to, to wind the yarn um, into these cakes. I, I know that seems like a really laborious process, um, but as you may have noticed, I'm yeah, I'm not necessarily about like the easiest or fastest way of going about things. Um and I do find that it's a nice it's a nice break. It's very satisfying. Um yeah, it's a nice break from knitting. So yeah. Um yeah, I scored these two. I think that together was like 25 Rand, which is oh, that's like probably less than like two dollars or to um, euros, pounds, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think it's probably closer to like one pound. I think the pound is um, quite strong against the rand at the moment. Um, but yeah, um, so um, I also found this um, very difficult to see on camera um, at all. Um, yeah, it's also I think fingering weight. And um, yeah, it's this dark, dark brown color. I've been really loving brown at the moment. <laughs> like, yeah, you'll see now I've got another work in progress in, um, in brown. But um, yeah, I've really been enjoying this so far. Um, the brown, I mean. <laughs> um, not the yarn necessarily, although it was quite fun winding it up. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to figuring out what to do with this. Um, I'll probably hold it double um, just because I prefer to work with like a DK weight um, as opposed to fingering weight, obviously, because, you know, anything would take forever um, in fingering weight. Or maybe I'll just hold it together with like a bunch of other stuff and then, yeah, it'll kind of be like a, like a dark base or something. Um, but yeah, and then I also have, yeah, just some other smaller things, yeah, it's basically just blue and, and brown and, and orange, um, yeah, so this one, this one's a maybe a little bit furrier, I think this one's got a bit of wool or maybe some, mm, I don't know, it doesn't look like mohair, um, but this is an acrylic, um, but it's this, Yo, I really don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys this, especially if it's so dark. Um, yeah, I probably can't see that, but um, it's very, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but it's like a bunch of little strands um, that have been plied together. So it's a bunch of really thin two-ply strands that have been spun together. Um, and this acrylic is relatively expensive for acrylic um it's more expensive than than just like your basic you know that's something like this um or this is fingering and this is dk i think um yeah i really love to work with this this beanie is actually made in that kind of um, acrylic because I, it's so much softer and it also doesn't pull quite as easily so it's a really good looking yarn. I think it's like, I think it's L brand pure gold. 
something like that. Um, but when I see this in um, in a secondhand store or something, I always pick it up because I love to work with it. Um, and yeah, you know, when I do work with scraps, I like to keep you know similar ones together. Um, and yeah, it's nice to collect scraps of a certain kind, and then you can use them together in a project. Um, that's what I did with with this. Um, yeah, I think that's it for yarn acquisitions. Um, I think there were a couple of other, you know, bits and pieces. Um, chronologically, um, yeah, I can't really remember where I've gotten certain things. I mean, I go somewhere and then I pick up, like, a, you know, a couple scraps here and there. So um, it's difficult to tell, but, um, and they also all kind of disappear into my yarn stash. I like to keep my yarn stash nice and organized. Um, and have everything wound up into cakes as soon as possible and just, yeah, um, otherwise things become very chaotic, <laughs> um, which, uh, which makes knitting stressful for me, um, and that's like the opposite of what I want knitting to do for me. So, um, yeah, I guess we can get into works in progress. Um, I have this basket that I keep all my knitting in, um, next to the couch in the living room where I do most of my knitting. Um, yeah, it's got a lid. So it keeps everything nice and neat. Um, but I've brought it in here now so that I can show you what I'm making. So um, I've got three works in progress at the moment, um, which is kind of like, that's normal for me to have about three. Um, usually it's a bit more and at a point it was quite a bit more, um, especially when I was working on all of those finished objects that I just talked to you about. Um, but yeah, so let's start off with this one, which is the oldest one and which is going to be going on for a very long time. I just, yeah, that's kind of why I started it. That's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a long-term project. It's going to grow. I'm very excited about it. But basically what it is, <clears throat> is um, it's a bad idea blanket so um, yeah if you don't know who she is <laughs> you have to go and check her out on Instagram um, the knitwear designer Leaka Baga I think that's how you say it um, <clears throat> she's a, a Danish knitwear designer and um, she works with scraps, which is like my favorite thing, um, if you haven't realized that already. Um, and I just really love the way that she combines scraps and yeah, her projects are really, really beautiful. I can't wait to get my hands on her book. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. Um, because shipping to South Africa is, is a bit difficult. Um, yeah, so I might have to arrange with family members overseas. Um, yeah, I thought about maybe combining with with trips, um, overseas trips, but you know, that doesn't happen super often and um, there isn't really generally time to, to do like an order for a book or something like that. Um, yeah, so I was going to wait until I got her book to start this project because um, I'm sure there's a lot of like wisdom that I'm <laughs> that I'm missing out on. Um, but yeah, so let me actually just show you what it is. <laughs> so basically what it is is like a long string or long strip of scraps. Um, I'm almost done with this panel. So um, Basically what what you do is just, yeah, you can go check out the hashtag on in, on Instagram or just, yeah, um, I think it's just hashtag bad idea blanket. Um, basically what you do is you just knit like a bunch of these and then you sew them together or you, yeah, you crochet around them. Um, I've got some black yarn for that um, because I really like, that's what she used for hers and I really like the look of that. Um, and then you, yeah, you just kind of um, uh, crochet around it and then you sew the, the panels together and then it makes this really cool blanket. Um, 
it's also it's a fun fun way to like experiment with patterns um, or with colors um, rather I mean I really like how like this section looks like this this icy um, almost like mint mint green with this like cobalt blue with this red um, and then I have some variegated yarn in here as well um, this is all mostly DK weight um, because that's just what I use the most that's what is most accessible to me as well um, yeah uh, we don't have access to quite as much variety of yarns here in South Africa as one does overseas um, in Europe or the US so yeah which I don't mind I like um, I like working with DK so it's okay um, and acrylic so that's also okay um, yeah so this is a lot of scraps you know from old projects um, sometimes I will even you know um, there will be some really small scraps um, at the second hand shops and then I'll just buy those because I know I can just pop it in the blanket um, and they usually like cost almost nothing um, and yeah I like to think that I'm rescuing them and putting them in something beautiful that I'll love um, instead of them just kind of yeah just sitting there um, forever um, yeah so I'm really really in love with this uh, yeah I really love how it turned out the beginning I'm not so fond of like the colors they kind of look all right but yeah I think I think I started hitting my stride about here at the pink I also really like that um, but yeah that's the fun thing about it if you make a you know color combination that you're not so fond of it's fine because <laughs> the whole blanket is gonna be so crazy that um, yeah nobody will notice that one terrible color combination um, and also the designer um, Leica Barger she she's all about like ugly chic so um, yeah really check her out she's definitely my favorite knitwear designer a lot of my stuff is influenced by her um, so yeah so that's that's the first work in progress um, and then we'll have I'm just gonna I'm just gonna work chronologically so another thing that I like to keep my bag my um, <clears throat> my knitting projects in is a shoebox uh, sorry I think there was some delivery information <laughs> on the on the other side um, so I didn't want to show you the whole internet that um, yeah so I like to keep it in a box especially if I've got like a bunch of yarn cakes or yarn cone like this uh, that are a bit difficult to keep track of in a um, in a project bag like this this is just a, a like a tote bag um, I've got a bunch of fabric bags that I like to keep my projects in to keep everything organized um, yeah so this is work in progress number two um, it doesn't look like much yet at all um, yeah it's basically the top of the sweater so you can see there's a neck hole um, this is a Eric sweater I think um, I think that's what it's called um, I can't remember what what site it's off I think it's a Scandinavian site um, they have some really cool um, some cool things if I remember I'll link it in the description but um, yeah no, no promises <laughs> um, yeah so it's a very interesting construction um, which is why I wanted to to try this pattern I also you know this this yarn I got a bunch of it from again a secondhand shop and I wanted to use it for something um, and um, yeah so I'm making the sweater for my boyfriend um, and with the idea that I'll steal it um, often so yeah I just I thought it was like a nice neutral color maybe he can wear it to work um, and so on and he wears a lot of like blue shirts and stuff to work so I think brown looks good um, like I said I'm interested in brown at the moment and I think it looks really good with blue so as 
you seen with this. Um, maybe I'll use these two together eventually. Um, and that's also why I have a blue stitch marker. That's a little bear. Um, yeah, so it's it's a saddle shoulder, which which was very interesting. I've never done that before. Um, it's a top down sweater, um, but basically you knit like like these two pieces to here, like these panels, and then you pick up stitches around the edge and cast on stitches for the neckline, and then you work in the round um, and do like raglan increases um, for the sleeves and the body. So, yeah, it's very interesting. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think I messed up the, the picking up a little bit. There's like some holes on some of the um, two of the corners, but I think I'll just like close that up with a stitch um, later um, once I'm finishing everything up. Um, but yeah, I think this yarn is DK weight. Um, but it's kind of like on, on the thin side of a DK weight. <laughs> Um, so I've decided to hold it together with a really tiny little strand, um, which is from this massive cone. Um, yeah, so, and the cone is acrylic, um, and the, um, the other yarn, this, like, tweedy, tweedy yarn, um, I think it's got some, some, um, wool in it um, but it's also mainly acrylic um, it also just makes it so much easier to wash um, to be honest um, yeah so this cone that's what I was going to talk about this cone um, is one of quite a few that I got from a friend I think it was in primary school um, she I don't know where her mom got it from but it was like they had Basically, the whole attic was full of these, of these um, cones um, that they'd gotten from somewhere, probably dead stock, um, like definitely dead stock um, from somewhere, and then they were going to donate it um, to a place um, that like teaches women how to knit and so on. Um, and yeah, I saw that stuff, and I was like drooling I was like oh my goodness I I've never seen so much yarn in one place before um yeah I mean I wasn't like the most avid knitter at that stage but I was also I was a very avid collector of yarn and um craft um supplies which I still am as you may have noticed <laughs> I do like to collect little things and use them um yeah anyway so um, I have a bunch of these cones. A lot of them are beige or um, brown or blue. <laughs> um, yeah, clearly I had a thing for brown and blue back then as well. Um, so blue was my favorite color um, at that stage. I don't really have a favorite color right now. Um, I love all the colors. <laughs> um, so yeah um but now the these cones have been taking up a lot of space and as you've seen that's a very thin strand of yarn that's like not even lace weight um so or maybe it is lace weight not sure um but it's not something i would generally use a lot of so i um yeah i'm just holding it together with with other things um in the hopes that it will yeah, kind of disappear into projects that way. I also really like it because this yarn, I I get the idea, you know, when I was winding it up, it's not the strongest. Um, it might be because it's old, um, but it's, I think it's also just how it's spun. Um, and I think this extra strand gives the, the fabric a bit of strength. So, um, yeah, very happy with that combination. Um, it also makes it a bit interesting because this is like a brownie, it's kind of got some grey in it, um, which isn't my favourite. So this just, the cone just, well the yarn from the cone just kind of warms it up a little bit, which I really like. Um, yeah, so that's work in progress number two. Uh, let's move on to number three. 
that I cast on last night um, because I just wanted, yeah, I wanted something new. Um, and it's this pink thing, which I'm obsessed with how it's turning out. Um, again, secondhand yarn <laughs> that I found. Um, these two. Um, I like absolutely love how they look together, but this is all I have. So, um, and I think this has got some wool in it. It shades quite a bit. This also, I think, you know, that's not going to hold up very well in a garment, I think. So what I'm doing is I'm making a cushion. Um, <laughs> I've made a lot of cushion covers, uh, well, quite a few cushion covers. You can have a look at my Instagram to see. I think there's one of them on there. I have made more than just that one. Um, but it's nice because you kind of just, I'm just knitting like plain stockinette in the round, you know, just, it's a lovely mindless project and this fabric is just so beautiful. <laughs> Pink and orange is another one of my favorite color combinations. Um, and a lot of my other cushions are also that color combination. So I think it's going to look really good um, on the couch. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. Um, we, yeah, we moved in a couple of months ago, so we're just collecting, collecting some stuff for the place, and, um, yeah, it's been really fun to make things, um, especially the, the cushion covers, um, and it's so nice because I like to stuff them with, like, a combination of, like, regular stuffing, but then I also like to use some, like, um, really tiny yarn scraps um, and fabric scraps and so on that I've been collecting because like I said I don't like to throw anything away <laughs> um, yeah and then I also also just have this which is uh, you know acquired in the same way second hand um, that I have in the same bag it's got some like glitters and stuff in it it's it's very interesting um, it's it's relatively thick as well um, and I was thinking, you know, if I'm not happy with the dimensions of this, once it's finished, once I run out of this, then I thought I'd either either add in like a, like an extra stripe on the edge, um, or I was actually thinking it would be look quite nice if I had like a crochet border around the edge. Um, I really like that look to have like a contrasting like piping um, type of thing on the um, on a cushion. So I think that would be quite nice. I think they look kind of good together, you know. It's not super contrasting, but um, yeah, it's nice to have that like, you know, darker border. Um, yeah, so that is it for works in progress. Um, yeah, like I said, three is the normal amount for me. Um, I am going to talk about one more thing though, because it's something that has been on the go for a long time. I've had a bit of an issue with it and now I'm very excited to, um, yeah, I think I finally come up with an idea of how to fix it. So, um, it's this. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might recognize this. Um, it was something I started for Leica Baga's No Fear Knit Along, which basically was like you pick a project that, you know, that you're afraid of, that has some of your knitting fears attached to it, and then you knit it, and you don't have any fear. So my fears were um, color work, like fair isle color work, um, and also knitting a whole sweater with small needles, um, and I think um, making a fitted sweater. So this I was having an absolute blast. Look how lovely that looks. Um, yeah, so it's basically just like these little hearts um, and the white is like the base. Um, and for the hearts I use like little scraps. So I'm, I wound a bunch of little little balls like this um, with like really tiny scraps and yeah it ended up looking like this which I love. Um, however the pattern that I followed um, was a free pattern um, yeah I'll link it if I remember but basically the 
it just didn't work out. Like, I hit gauge and everything, everything was fine, but I think, yeah, because it's a fitted sweater and because I'm not using, like, the exact yarns and, you know, whatever, there was some variation, obviously, um, the, the sleeve just fits, like, horribly, <laughs> like, really badly. Um, I was having real trouble, like, sewing it in. I tried, like, a bunch of different ways. Um, it just, it just doesn't fit well. And it's also, like, way too long. Like, I'm a tall person and I like longer sweaters, um, as well as cropped sweaters, but, you know, longer sweaters are fine. But, you know, <laughs> I, um, don't like how this, how this looks like on me. So luckily I sewed it all together before I did the second sleeve. So otherwise I would have knitted the entire sweater basically. And then, um, not had anything to do with it. So I banished it to this project bag. Um, and haven't set eyes on it in a while. Um, and, but it's like, come back into my brain. Um, this project because I really think it's beautiful. I love this color work This color work is great because it's it's very repetitive So it's very easy to keep control of um, or to keep track of you, I didn't have to look at the at the chart like Almost at all after the first like row or so um, Yeah, it was really lovely so What I plan to do with this now <laughs> is um I don't know if you know about uh, Lea Kabaga's, um Alone Together sweater, which is a free pattern that she put out on her Instagram, like through the, through her stories um, during lockdown, so that, you know, it's a very simple pattern. Um, I made one, <laughs> um, which, yeah, I'm not going to show that to you now, but um, yeah, it's a fairly simple pattern. It's like a, you know, a back piece, which is just a you know, rectangle, the front piece is also just a rectangle, sleeves are also just rectangles, um, there's a little bit of shaping for the neck. Um, yeah, so that sweater is knit in a much, you know, with much thicker yarn, much bigger needles and so on, um, so I don't think I'm going to be able to use the exact numbers, but I would like to do something that fits similarly, because I really like it, um, the one that I have, um, but it's like a little bit oversized and I've seen some other people make the sweater a bit more fitted um, which I love <laughs> so I'm very happy with that um, with that idea and I think I'm gonna go for it I'm just gonna let myself work on some of these other projects first <laughs> um, yeah so who knows that might that might be what what happens with this um, yeah, I've, I definitely, I want to keep think carefully, but I think this is the right decision to do that with this. It does mean unraveling everything, um, but that's not really something I'm particularly afraid of. I think I am going to be sad about it, um, but I think it's going to be very cathartic because this sweater has made me very angry because it didn't fit nicely. Um, and I spent a lot of time on it and I had a lot of like family members because I was knitting it over Christmas I had a not lot of family members who have been asking me like oh have you finished that thing that's where yet and then I've had to tell them sadly <laughs> it has not turned out very well um yeah so I um yeah so that's what I plan to cast on um next but I don't know how, when that's going to be, um, I'm going to focus on these other projects first. Although the blanket, I think, you know, that's a background project that's going to be like yours. <laughs> um, but it's really fun because it's nice and mindless and easy and it's, it's relatively um, portable as well, you know, if I want to go somewhere with it. Um, yeah, I think we are reaching <laughs> the recording limit. Alright, so, um, yeah, thank you so much for listening, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope that was interesting, um, I hope you got some rows in on whatever project you're working on, um, and, yeah, um, like if you like the video, <laughs> it feels so weird to say, um, 
But yeah, subscribe if you like to see more of this. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at tb.makes on Instagram. Um, yeah, I'll leave that all um, linked below. But yeah, thank you for spending this time with me. I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Bye! <laughs>